Big enough for one of us. Hombre. Hombre. Goodness gracious gravy, the fine people at the Lodge Poker Room down in Round Rock, Texas. He invited me and Grace and Dan to come check out their property and play a little unlimited Texas two card. And that is exactly what we do. We head on down, and this is the first day we've been there. Oh, I should probably tell you who I am. My name is Adam Rue. This is my poker vlog. You should know that because you clicked on it, and then this started playing. So that's who I am, and that's what this is. Welcome uh, to the vlog. And so this is the first night we're here. Uh, we just jump right into the action, right into the 510 uncapped uh, live stream game. And I bought in for the cool $5,000. And uh, so in this hand, what's going on here? Uh, that that dude in the black shirt with the bandana thingamajig on his head, that guy's name is The Chemist. It's probably not actually The Chemist, but that's, you know, what he goes by. Uh, he was tanking for a very long time to call with the Queen 10, but then he puts it in there. And, and I think, what did I do, four bet this pot? I know I made it 375 pre. And, uh, and these are the two hands that decided to stick it out with me. The pocket sevens for Scotland and the Queen 10 for The Chemist. So a uh, little C-bet action from me with... Uh, King high, obviously looking for uh, folds. I mean, I have King high against uh, some people who put in almost four hundred dollars preflop. So, uh, you know, probably not, you know, winning. Uh, turn card five six six five five. In the commentary, the uh, Mike uh, and uh, Rick said that this is not a spot that I should continue because I wouldn't even bet aces here. But guess what? They're wrong. I would one hundred percent bet aces here. So I'm gonna keep telling my story. That I have a humongous pocket pair, and I bet nine hundred dollars, and uh, it's gonna put Scotland in a really tough spot. And he actually tells me after this hand, it wasn't this bet that made him fold. It was the fact that he knew what was coming on the river if he called this and didn't hit his what he thought was two outer for sevens full, and uh, so that's why he eventually uh, decides to make the decision that he does uh, because he knew that uh, it was gonna get a little bit expensive for him. If, if he did, if he hung around, so uh, I think I played this hand fine. The commentators at the time did not, but guess what? That's why they're commentators. And uh, I scooped that first pot, and uh, things are looking good in Round Rock, Texas. You know what's funny? This hand reminds me of. Uh, a later session that we played where the producer actually had to come out and change one of the cards because it wasn't registering on the felt you know this is a special table with special cards where you kind of just maneuver them in a little circle and the machine will pick it up you know what it is and so anyway the this the particular card that was messing up was the three of diamonds the reason that this hand reminds me of that is because um Seven or the five of spades shows up in Scotland and the chemist uh, hand. So the three of diamonds they actually came and took that card off the table. And I told the uh, the table hey, guys, why do you take the three of diamonds and replace it with another? What's going on? And they told me, well, the reason that they did that is that the three of diamonds was dead and had to be charged. And for the longest time, you know, I'm just nodding my head, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And so I'm looking around the table, and everybody's looking at me like. Does this guy seriously believe that the card needs to be charged? I didn't know. I didn't think that you plugged in the card, like, into the wall. I thought maybe there was, like, a special box, you know, like your headphones, you know, the earbuds that you put in a special box, and that charges them. I didn't know. But anyway, I was the butt of the joke here. And um, so this is an interesting spot here on the turn for me. I bet $230, and a Scotland makes it 800 He makes it 800 And so, you know, he didn't raise pre-flop, and he didn't... Uh, he didn't check raise the flops, so he can't have super duper strong hands. Ace eight and ace six, I suppose, would be in his range there. But uh, I need to see one more card. I don't mind mixing up with Scotland. He was given action. I'm going to give him action back. River card comes the queen of spades. It's an irrelevant card in my opinion. And uh, so, if I had the best hand on the turn, I should have the best hand on the river. Now that's not just like gospel like you shouldn't just always call on the river you know you need to reevaluate and uh but in this particular spot he you know i check i'm thinking i'm gonna call a bet if he checks uh if he bets but he checks so i just flipped over my hand and it happens to be good here and i'm super stoked that uh in one of the biggest games i've ever played uh i'm 2-0 in big pots 
Now, I had no way to know this, but this pot that we're about to play here is one of the most important pots I played on the entire trip. And yeah, this is just day one. Uh, so I have the 10 9 of clubs. You know, like that butterfly effect thing where if one thing happens, it creates ripples in the universe and things happen over there and things happen over there. And it all comes back to being like that one thing that started it. That's kind of how this is. If I lose this pot, it's going to be a bad trip. If I win this pot, it's going to be a good trip. And you'll see why as we go down. Now, TM here in the uh, big blind, he doesn't need a good hand to to three bet. So the fact that he has ace king, y'all know it's going to get big. I don't know if you guys watched the live stream, but he's very aggressive. He makes it to, what does that say, $305? And uh, it's 245 more for me, and I have a 10 and a 9. I didn't fly to Round Rock, Texas, outside the Austin city limits to play at the Lodge Poker Room to fold 10 9 of clubs. It ain't happening. And by me doing that, it gives Eli some odds to call. It gives E some odds to call. And we're going to go four ways to a flop. Now, there's going to be some action on this flop. And I want, one thing I want you to remember is when somebody makes an interesting play... When you're, when you're rating somebody on, on how good or bad you think they are, you only remember the bad plays that they've ever made. You never remember their good plays. And that's sort of what happens in this hand. I sort of get pigeonholed in with Eli that he has made some squirrely plays. Therefore, this play that he's making must be squirrely too. That'll give you a little bit of insight into what I was thinking at the time. Now, I would not have C bet this and as if I was TM into three other people he chose to I called with top pair because again I flew to Austin Texas and not folding top pair and then Eli goes all in for twenty three hundred dollars so this is what I'm talking about I'm thinking okay well Eli has made some questionable plays here so therefore I can't fold top pair when in reality I should have thought about this is two thousand more dollars to me to call and all I have is ten nine and I called really fast uh luckily for me he has 10 9 and i can't lose we end up just chopping up give a little fist bump there but if i had lost that pot guys th things would have been a lot different for the pot or for the trip and this is the one pot that i played that we looked back on afterwards where dan chambers said dude that was terrible like he didn't hate any of my plays other than this one. Now, I'm not saying he agreed with all my plays, but that particular play with the 10-9 he thought was a punt, and I got away with it. So things were on my, you know, were going my way uh, early on in this trip, and I can only thank the poker gods for that because it surely wasn't anything that I did. It's not like I soul read Eli for 10-9. It's just the fact that I had top pair, and I said this guy's not very good based on his previous plays, and, and therefore I'm going to, I'm going to continue. So. But anyway, we have we're, we've moved on. We're already on the turn card here on this next hand where I have pocket nines and it, and, in, and it was a three-bet pod, maybe four-bet by Cy there. And, and it comes to my attention that I must have the best hand here on the turn, so I fire out a bet for 350 looking to get called here because I think I have the best hand. Now, if they fold, that's not the end of the world. In fact, that's fine. I'm sure they have cards that can beat me, but I'm thinking I'm good here, and I'm thinking that my pl the player to my left there, uh, Reagan, uh, we can call him uh, Tight, um, thinking he probably has like a pair, you know, sixes, seven, something like that. Maybe he's got an ace five suited. Uh, sure, he could have a flush. That that's possible. Um, I do throw out five hundred dollars there. This is a value bet. I'm looking to get called. I will definitely be uh, bet folding. If I get raised, especially from this particular player who's on the tighter side. And that's what I get. He raises me to like 1300 bucks. So uh, should I have gone into check call mode? Yeah, maybe. Uh, but this was a value bet. I was actually looking to uh, put the 500 out there and get called. And um, there was some debate in my, uh, my poker circle on whether or not I could uh, find a fold here. And... Uh, I didn't think it was that difficult of a fold. I, I, I mean, I thought about it for a little while. I wanted to make sure that I was, you know, it was a decent sized pot. I want to make sure I'm making the right decisions. Uh, so I, uh, I ducked out of there after a little bit of time. But yeah, I think I made the right fold there. Oh, go, go. All 
All right, the double straddle is on. It is uh, 5, 10, 20, 40. Uh, we like to gamble down here in Round Rock, Texas. I look down at uh, the old Ace Jack, good enough for me, making $160, and uh, gets over to the double straddler TM, and he's got pocket sixes, and playing a pot against this particular dude in position is going to be all right with me. He is uh, he is somebody who, is, who likes to mix it up and give action, and that's uh, that's what we like. We, like uh, we don't like nits, and he's not a nit, trust me. Flop is real bad. Ace, 10, 6. It doesn't get much worse than that when you flop top pair against a set. Um, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm just going to bet for value after he checks. And um, when he goes for this check raise right here, which he's going to do, yeah, he makes it uh, 300 and some odd dollars. 375. There's a lot of stuff he can have. King, queen of hearts. King, jack of hearts. I don't need it. Seven, eight of hearts. Seven, nine of hearts. Eight, nine, all these kind of things that he can have. So I can't just fold like a nincompoop. I have to continue and see what happens on the turn. The turn card comes, and it's a eight of hearts, which is about as bad as it gets. So all of those hands that I was beating on the flop that I'm no longer beating now, uh, you would think... Oh, okay, well, Adam, you know, he laid out his plan. He's just going to call and see what happens on the turn. Then if it's a bad turn, he can get out of there. Yeah, one would think, but uh, nope, I just called the 600. So now we're going to the river card, and I'm calling with what I think is the best hand. I'm not going for, like, a, a raise on the river if a, if a heart hits or anything like that. I'm just going to play this hand like a straight-up donkey. He bets, I don't even know, 900, something like that. And, uh... I don't even think about it that long. I just put in the chips. I just call. And uh, he flips over three sixes, which is way good. Oh, I'm sorry. He bet 650. But anyway, it's way good, and I'm forced to uh, fold. And sometimes against players that you think are action players, you just need to station. And that's what I did. I just, I was just a station here. And uh, unfortunately, TM's going to win the pot, but uh, I hope I'll get him next time, if there is a next time. The straddle is on, and it looks like I uh, backed out of putting in the double straddle. Classic nit. Look down at king, queen of diamonds. Actually, would have been a decent hand to have the straddle on, to be completely honest with you. I got no reason to lie. And I make it, uh, what I make it there? 70 bucks? Something like that? And, uh, yeah, 70 bucks. TM calls, side calls, and uh, we are off. I'm sorry, side didn't call at all. He put in a three bet to $270. So, uh, if... Uh, you can make an argument for folding King Queen of Diamonds for a, a bet like that, but what did I say? I didn't fly to Round Rock, Texas to go folding King Queen of Diamonds. I got two fifths of a royal flush. Comes Queen, a Jack, and a six. I got the uh, top pair with an overcard, backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. I have everything. Psy only has one pair. Anyway, he bets what? Four hundred dollars? Uh, four twenty-five. And I'm going to continue the lines that I've been sort of taking here a little bit passive. I don't see any reason to, to throw in a raise because, I mean, he, he could have aces. He could have kings even though I block it. He could have a set of jacks. I mean, there are things he can have. And, of course, TM's not going to fold his king ten of clubs because he has uh, some straight opportunities. And uh, I actually, you know, can't blame him for that. Uh, turn card comes six of clubs, improving my hand to two pair. Yeah, improving everybody to a little bit at least. And uh, after side checks, I throw out a bet there of thirteen hundred dollars. Uh, this is a protection. I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to force people who have hands like you know, king ten of clubs to pay a little price to uh, to continue. And then people like have ace jack. You know, if they want to draw against me, they have to pay. To now, I didn't specifically say, hey, I need to be betting thirteen hundred in case they have ace jack and 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 king ten. But obviously, that goes without saying that. If they fold, that's good for me. If they call, then we'll navigate one more street. And that's how we wrap it up down here in uh, the lodge down in uh, Round Rock, Texas. In for 5000 out for 7000 The mathematician in me tells me that is a plus $2,000 session. Being that this is a vlog and I had to keep it between like 10 and 20 minutes, uh, I had to leave a lot of hands out, including every single hand that Rain Delay played. So if you want to watch the stream in its entirety or just check out some of the hands that me and dan played that didn't make the vlog check out the lodge live stream i'll have a a link in the description box below where you can click it 
Or you can just go to YouTube and search Live at the Lodge. It'll it'll pop right up, and you can listen to the uh, the episode right there. Right there. If you uh, like these videos, uh, do me a favor, thumbs up, leave a message, as also known as a comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in uh, not too long. Vlog number two from uh, Round Rock, Texas, at the Lodge, and uh, should be out very soon. Just